Günaydın sevgilim ne güzel bir gün değil mi? Yataktan çıkmadan bütün gün film izleyelim mi? Hello everybody. CM Kozeman special about basically why traditional media art matters even more in this day of almost purely digital artistic production for posterity we are recording in the 23rd of november 2023 23-1-1-23 a perfectly nearly symmetrical date and at the date of recording increasingly more of arts i'm not talking about ai art by the way ai art is completely outside this discussion but more and more artistic production is turning over to digital means in fact the other day i met a fan and a friend and basically they said stuff to the effect of i feel so depressed and bored as i sketch on an ipad even with the latest procreate and the most expensive pen and the fanciest brushes the things i make she said feel inconsequential quite something eh and to such a degree that people are buying more like paper like ipad surface covers and stuff to kind of make their working action feel more papery but is this a good thing or bad thing and what does it mean exactly for basically taking ink pencils and pen to paper what do all of these means we're gonna be discussing those in this in this big great podcast so thanks for tuning in Before beginning, we have several rules of House Kozeman. Rule 1 is subscribe to this channel, like, leave a comment on this video. If you're a new first-time visitor, don't be alarmed. This channel has many videos on many slightly associated subjects. I hope you enjoy it. Please subscribe and also consider donating to me on patreon.com. If you want, if you're already a Patreon donor, maybe bring some friends over or go to buymeacoffee.com and support me there. If you support me on Patreon, you get to see dozens of new artworks that nobody else gets to see anywhere. So that's that's a benefit, okay? Go there and support me. And also if you want to get something in your hands, you can also try visiting the CM Kozeman merch store. The links are all in the video description. Now, some of you may be newcomers, so let me just give you a brief summary. I am an artist myself of some repute. My artistic output has two main avenues. One of them is basically surreal paintings executed with watercolors or acrylics on canvas, paper or even other exotic materials such as metal. Then I'm a, an illustrator of extinct animals and speculative organisms. That is to say, I can visualize scientific fantasies such as what would life look like if it evolved in a higher gravity environment, stuff like this, you know. Most of you viewers will probably know what I'm talking about. I am not, let us say, unknown in the realms of science fiction and speculative evolution art. So you may have heard of me. A great many of you probably are already subscribed to this, to this channel. But you know, I'm just, I'm just being, well, I'm just covering all the bases and being redundant in case more people come and watch this video later on. Okay, so in order to dive deeper into this love letter to traditional media in an age of digital art, I conducted two surveys on the internet, one of them on Twitter and the other, well, on this very YouTube channel. I just did polls and asked people to comment on them and I asked artists if digital arts media suddenly disappeared and everyone was forced to create with traditional materials only would this make you feel happier and more content with your art to my great surprise nearly 70% of people said not really and 30% of people said yeah and I got a lot of comments so let's skim over them before going on to the main body of the discussion Tim Morris said on Twitter it depends I do not greatly need digital art mediums I was tra trained traditionally by myself growing up and in classes and at school too but what about the means of sharing images the internet helps with the reach of our material very correct and uh, Tim is of an older generation so he like me trained with pens and pay pencils first so his mind is formatted practically similar to mine Wendy Kaur says, does that mean do I need to go out and buy art supplies and mess up my room? Yes, you need that. 
you need that so badly, Wendy. I can't tell. I mean, the whole joy of like messing up a room. And unless you are painting with oil painting, you don't really need to make a huge mess. So yeah, but that mess is part of the fun, part of the allure and part of the charm. I mean, when you make that mess, when you make tangible stuff, art reveals its therapeutic side to you. Not that you need art therapy all the time, but you know, when you take something on paper and struggle with it, or when even when you make something very simple, like a quick, like 10 second scratch on a piece of paper and you dope some paint on it to color it, you know, you create an artifact. You create an artifact you can hold on your hand, you don't need a third party device to view it and it's just very very satisfying. Sony W says I draw both on paper and iPad which means I couldn't draw digitally which means if I couldn't draw digitally I would be mad. That's another thing I observe with the upcoming younger generation and I am a early millennial let us say. I, I will be 40 years old soon and I am recording at the year of our lord 2023. But a lot of the current generation feels frustration and anger when the digital devices they use don't work properly. So there's a kind of stress element, a weird stress element to this too. It's almost as if digital technology creates stress when you are using it. Titanus Pixel says, I love drawing traditionally, but I don't want to leave the digital drawing. Okay, many of us feel the same way. Offshore Oddity says, fuck no. Do you know how hard it is to run an old printing press? So I guess they're a designer. Maybe they make designs and stuff. So yeah, in that case, I think digital technology really is revolutionary. Joshua Knuppe says, I could easily live without digital, but I wouldn't. it wouldn't make me feel better about my own stuff. Joshua Knuppe, by the way, is a great paleo artist. Go follow his work. So he's also very talented with traditional media and watercolors, but he's a genius level illustrator with basically digital stuff. He can make realistic drawings of any extinct animal, no matter how obscure. So yeah. Starlot's space art says, I can literally paint with light. This is the dream of a thousand generations realized, but are you giving up something for this dream? This is one of the core dilemmas I found myself in when formulating and recording this video. Yes, with digital, you can li really play, play with light, paint with light, create effects and basically visions that traditional media can't match. But at the same time, it all feels a bit like repetitive and shallow. At the end, you're, you're staring at a screen all day. And I wonder if traditional media had less of this effect. Anyways, moving on, Kıvılcım Feyzi Oğlu, Turkish fan, says, I digital, I use digital internet culture on a traditional medium, so I would be doomed. So Kıvılcım here draws traditional cartoons, maybe, but based on internet memes. And yes, this is a, an angle that I never realized, but yes, the online world has a culture all of its own. As Marshall McLuhan says, the medium is the message. So there. But it's also interesting that I think like Kıvılcım here is happier than most artists drawing digital memes on digital formats because she is drawing digital memes on traditional formats. So memes and subject notwithstanding, it still seems that covertly traditional media has a better feeling, maybe. By the way, if you have other ideas and opinions or disagreements about this, please comment. Comments drive this channel. It places me in a better situation in the eyes of the algorithm. Okay, Azuri says, <laughs> I'm never gonna be content with my art, so it doesn't affect me. Come on, man. Don't say that. I I've never looked at their art properly. Let I'm just looking now. But if somebody is not content with their art, chances are they're a great artist. And yeah, Azuri's art is nice. Very nice, colorful stuff. There's a goo creature, a nice purple lady. Cool and like lovely stuff. I don't know, as far as I'm concerned, you don't have anything to feel bad about. Anyways, that's a bit outside the scope of our debate, but yeah, I just wanted to kind of comfort this friend. Mikin Design, a great speculative evolution artist, says, Never felt less happy or content when doing digital. I personally feel happy doing both, and it's good to be able to switch between the two. Each medium has its own unique qualities. Some things I learned in one translate into the other. On the other hand, if AI disappeared, and there's a salivating emoji, well, yes, AI is outside the scope of this debate because if it was in the scope of this debate, it would last for hours. Let's not go there. I also think it's highly unethical in its current in incarnation. But Mikin raises a good point. It's good to be able to switch. Now, I personally, let me just talk about my way of 
art maybe basically i just draw on a regular piece of paper but then usually i scan this piece of paper enlarge it change it correct it then print it again at a very low opacity like 10 percent opacity and then draw on that printout itself for the final version then i take this clean drawing scan it again then digitally apply color or screen tones and then print again so i have a kind of like up and down up and down you know both holes kind of mentality and it just feels great so Mikin also has a similar thing also sometimes i draw purely digitally and like when i do it sometimes it feels really relaxing but if i do it for too long it just feels dreary i mean looking at the screen just you know hurts my eyes after a point nature cypher says no no control z is terrible so they miss the ability to undo their mistakes that's true that's why I think digital media and traditional media in the digital age have or are going to evolve into different entities. Basically, the kind of traditional media that shines in this age is not the perfectly polished like airbrush or gouache or acrylic illustrations that were vogue during the 1990s, but they are the kind of more sketchy, studiesy, kind of like honest about their mistakes kind of traditional drawings because those things radiate humanity in the day and age. Whereas if you are using digital media, you can just undo your mistakes and produce perfect looking artifacts at a quick pace. So there, I'm just trying to introduce you to the subject here. I mean, these things obviously are not mutually exclusive. I, I probably would not like to give up digital art either, but the medium is the message. So traditional media is going to become something else in the age of digital de domination and that's worth considering john zoidberg says in my economic situation it's easier for me to make a digital drawing than in traditional media correct but then again some great traditional pieces really can be made with like basically dime store watercolors or acrylics but i guess if you make the investment of a computer or a tablet up front it's on a broad run cheaper but what if your apple pen breaks that shit's like a hundred dollars so there nemoralis art says actually i have very little experience with traditional media i usually draw various amorphous monsters so without digital media i think i would be forced to sculpt with play-doh and by the way nemoralis art is really cool basically they take photos of like existing quirky places or vehicles and add like strange creatures to them and the creatures overall like lightning and effects and volume they look really photorealistic a unique form of art so yeah i guess without digital this kind of art would be in a different place let me just say so there i mean once again the medium is the message and the digital mode of production makes a whole lot of new art forms new forms of expression possible so yeah just a second oh yeah let's take a little sip of the cosman tea <sighs> oh yeah please donate to me on patreon if you like this discussion okay spiral says i'm already doing everything on traditional so i don't think it would affect me too much and spirals artwork is like so this is interesting to consider there's even a new form of traditional art and this is the kind of traditional art in which you sketch or draw on a piece of paper or even a school notebook and then you take a digital snapshot of this traditional drawing and usually these things have uneven light they are gray and kind of like low contrast sometimes there's like class notes or other pieces of writing in the sides i used to think this was bad but then i think this is an entirely new form of digital artifact based on traditional drawing and it also really captures so much about the life sensibility and the overall overall personality of the person who makes them i mean uh, i mean one of my friends was recently i mean let's say in in a kind of like a medical situation and then they were drawing on this kind of like hospital notebook and stuff and it's just a perfect snapshot of their life in this like time of healing and that's a digital artifact and it just tells us so much the same with school notes i mean like these like low resolution pictures you take of the creatures and characters you doodle on your school notebooks you look back at them in 20 years even the digital stuff you look back at them in 20 years it's gonna feel so nostalgic so there's a lot to be revealed in that perspective notice by now that i am not really in a kind of either or debate um, i mean the i kind of catfished you with the headline saying like a love letter to traditional media 
but I just want you as artists or art interested people to think more about the interplay between digital production, traditional production, digital modes of dissemination, traditional modes of dissemination and the hybrid methods we have in between and well you came for an art lesson you're st st staying for the lesson in postmodernity okay some fucking peep says i would i'm significantly better and more comfortable on paper even if digital looks inherently better i i agree with you so much man i agree with you so fucking much i mean this is why i carry a sketch pad and like different pieces of paper everywhere i go and i just sketch 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 and sometimes i work at these like student cafes or like libraries or place and and sometimes there are artists there too and i look at them they're almost all of them are on ipads although recently i see more people on sketchbooks too like og sketchbooks but i i mean to my credit and make of this what you will somebody drawing on paper always turns more heads than somebody like just whittling away on an iPad paper like I've pan $100 jingamabob, you know? All right, more, more comments. By the way, comment farming on Twitter really works well. God damn, especially for purely discussion related YouTube posts like that. Man, here's a cross fertilization between different digital media right here. Anyways, Saidra says, Considering I suffer from terrible shakes and tremors, digital art allows me to draw thanks to the stabilizer setting in some programs. No, because I would be drawing full stop. So that's another issue to consider. I hope this difficulty is not medical. And if it is, I hope you get better soon. Let me follow this person too. Well, I mean, yeah, in, in certain cases, yes, digital does alleviate certain problems, even medical ones. Hans Kadar says, what the heck? Of course not. I am in favor of innovative evolution of creative artistic techniques, but the only thing that worries me is their commercial exploitation as a mere exploitative product. Maybe here Hans Kadar took digital media in the scope of AI art maybe so yeah that's commercial exploitation but yeah so they are like not completely on board with t team digital I guess feather pile says not significantly but there's something reassuring about having the original piece in physical media that's comforting yes 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 I mean I've been actually the other day I was just fucking around in like some weird place okay and I found a bunch of just very small bits of sheet iron sheet metal here's one actually well you can't see it but i'll just knock on it for you you know i can drop this and like nothing would happen i can have to throw it to the other end of the room like a shuriken nothing would happen it would get rusty but the rust would just add to the patina so yeah i mean especially like tangible physical stuff you know in libraries you have paper things surviving for over a thousand years if it's stone carvings, they survive for tens even of thousands of years. So survivability is a big deal. Whereas even if you save your file perfectly, you have things like format corruption, device corruption, you know, what's gonna happen to your iPad Zunga Bonga when in the year 2050, not Steve Jobs, but the other guy, Tim Cook says, ah, these are now obsolete and presses a button. But look, all your fucking iPads are just obsolete. And so much art is just gonna be lost. They are very easy to make and disseminate, but if something happens, something big happens, you know, some solar flare or, or some shit, you know, none of these are gonna survive. So my recommendation, my recommendation to all digital artists is that every year you must really like spend money, go to a print shop, or even go to like a, I don't know if they still have those like Walmart photo developers and stuff. Print your best digital artworks in photo format and just keep them in an album. You never know when you might lose it. I, I regularly print and archive all my digital works, by the way. So you should do it too. And of course, if you have digital works, you must always back them up in at least three separate hard drives in at least two separate brands. So I use Lacey and Toshiba hard drives and I just back them up. And one of the backups is not even in the same house because, you know, what if there's an earthquake and everything goes and miraculously I survive, you know, I would want an access to my backup. So yeah, that's a whole nice side alley about backing the shit up. Oh yes, back that up. Yes, now let's go. Rex J. Burton says, wouldn't make too much of a difference to me, to be honest. Cool man, K. Fish and Lemon says, paper with pencil or graphic tablet, if I can draw, I will still be happy. That's so cool. And that's one of the nicest things about like, this is the mark of a true
true artist. You know, if you know somebody in art school and they say, ah, I got so many drawings to make, I'm bored. This person is not a real artist. If art feels like a chore, if art feels like a chore, you don't really enjoy it. And you may not really be like an artist in the traditional sense of the word. But who am I to judge? Who am I to judge? Dalek Soup says, I don't draw, but I used to write fan fiction. If I have to use pen and paper to write, I will go crazy. I have horrible handwriting. Well, that's an interesting fact, but as an author of a well-known science fiction book, All Tomorrows, I am actually doing all my writing on paper, and then I'm using the computer to transcribe my notes, and in doing so, I avoid all grammar errors, I correct mistakes, and I do the second pass in the writing, I work much faster. When it's just me and the pen and paper to write, I write much faster. There's nothing to distract me. So there's that to consider. Digital stuff always offers distractions. And if you got some like Zen monk-like patience, I guess that's cool, but I don't have that. I know I'm like an untrained doggy mind. I go wherever I want. So limit the options and you focus the creativity. That's just one thing to say. Let's check some last minute comments. Death by Proxy says there's no lovely crunchy JPEG compression or chromatic aberration with physical sketches. Yeah, maybe this was tongue in cheek, but this is true. Some of those JPEG artifacts, they are really like gaining a sort of emotional appeal. You know, people want them because it feels more real, like the kind of weird blurs and color smudges in expired film of old world, old style photography. So there's that to consider too. Thanks, thanks Proxy. I mean, with this comment, you know, you really added to the discussion here. So yeah, another comment from Cat Chicken. They say, I can very easily live with that, but I don't think I would feel better without digital. After all, it's just another medium and it would be a bit sad to lose that medium. Yeah, very cool, very grounded, based, based commentary. So thank you, Cat Chicken. Okay, these are the comments I farmed on, I farmed on Twitter. Oh wait, one more. Somebody named Jack Twist Nasty says, I want there to be as many media as possible forever, pretty much as a rule, but also for my own personal rules, uses, I love color picking so much. So color picking is a digital trick where you use the color picker tool to pick the color of something and then you can paint with it. And it just really like opens your eyes to color theory. Many things like you think maybe a dog you see on the street is brown, but actually if you like look at the real color under the blue sky, it's kind of like a grayish blue. There are many counterintuitive things with color like that. And you know, that whole color picking thing really makes you learn a lot about about painting and color theory in general. In fact, something I learned myself while mucking around with color pickers was I was just photo editing some pictures I had taken during summer. And I realized that in the Mediterranean during the summer, shadows are blue. That's unbelievable. So then I moved to basically traditional paintings, just like surreal art. And then instead of black or gray or brown, I laid in the shadows with blue and it just gave the painting such a lively, surreal, almost like Van Gogh-like mobility. Then I realized when you're painting traditionally, if you accentuate certain corners or shadows with unearthly colors, you know, if some part is moving at like a very tiny sliver of very bright yellow there, if something is in a shadow, just at a like very dark form of blue there, it really brings your paintings to life in a whole other way. So yeah, these are the comments I farmed from Twitter. If you commented after the recording, well, too bad, but thanks for contributing. You can also comment on the video comments and now let's go look at the comments i farmed over the same poll on youtube.com okay let's have it load okay lord grunwalder heal me ira says art is fun art is for everyone in every way how can people be expected to feel happier when they're forced to something people who feel better for making traditional art already make traditional art anyways yes i guess the forcing thing was a kind of hyperbole to drive for the discussion but thanks for being righteous my friend Chan Kite says, I think I only started doing digital art because I feel like I had to in order to be in line with contemporary standards for professionals in art. I think most digital art as software is not made for artists, but it's made for art professionals such as illustrators, animators, etc. Very nice point. Very, very nice point. I remember when the Wacom Cintiq first came out and the year was like 2008 or 7 or 6 or something. And it was like a massive 
like desk sized thing with its own power adapter and plugs and stuff and then I went to test it and then it was like a very laggy extremely slow cumbersome thing but it felt like magic to me I, I was so confident this was gonna be the future of painting and it was gonna make paper obsolete Ha! <laughs> Ironic! Because now, my entire studio is full of paper or even things like egg cartons or weird pieces of wood or boards I find during urban expeditions to paint on. But I guess the whole appeal of like painting in a magic mirror, yeah, it was like a magical thing back in the days when people could not really paint digitally. I remember when like the first digital concept art sketches came out in movies like Star Wars, Attack of the Clones and stuff. And they had this very like loose kind of like I'm talking about artists like Dermot Power or I think it was Tom Broadmore or Kevin Broadmore. Broadmore was the last name. So they had a very loose and raw color line with like very thick brushes that don't even twist with the curve of the pen. So they did this as scribble kind of thing and they just hinted at like motion or like the armor of a soldier or some tank or something it was so cool looking back at this now this earliest form of conceptual digital art kind of looks lame and repetitive but yeah back in, back when it first came out it was like wow you can do this and everyone wanted to be sketchy and like completely amorphous and like really sketchy like you know sketcher Anyways, Amanda says, I like both, but digital art has been convenient in many situations. If I had to choose, I would pick traditional, of course. Based Amanda, as always, pretty much my opinions too. I think I really like drawing or sketching traditionally than scanning them. So that's a hybrid approach. Leonardo Fogaka says, I really like working with traditional art, but the liberty of working with quote-unquote materials and undoing maybe he's referring to 3d art because of the materials can bring a joy that only digital can bring yeah agreed agreed i mean sometimes you know when i have my little vacuum tablet and i like sketch with a silly brush or something you know it's a, it's its own form of expression too so yeah yonda moegi says if this if digital art disappeared i wouldn't mind but i, I also wouldn't be so depressed too much wow i mean that's a case to the point and once again on youtube 70% of people would like to stay with digital art but then again you got commenters like this friend who say that that digital also secretly makes them depressed i don't know if you listen to this conversation this far please let me know does digital art do you think digital art secretly makes people depressed it may make them better artists but does it secretly depress people let me know i think it does do you agree or disagree it would suck to be forced like this. I'm not forcing anybody. It's just like a thought exercise. Alfred B says, I love drawing with a tablet. Okay, granted. And then maybe you are one of the generation who grew up with tablets. So you may have a perspective on these things that my generation, you know, the aging, ailing millennials like myself may completely lack. So I'm happy to be proven wrong on this. Reduvidae bug. <laughs> That's very cool because the name means wheel bug or assassin bug. These are the beak headed bugs that can really sting you and give you Chagas disease. Says, unfortunately, they both have, undoubtedly, they both have pros and cons, but I don't wanna be forced. Okay, bug, no one's forcing you, but yeah, so this is the lowdown on basically uh, a, a love letter to digital, no, a love letter to traditional arts in an age of digital domination. As we can see, it's not black and white. In fact, in many cases, there is a hybrid narrative. Sometimes the art is traditional, but by the way, this reminds me of this one artist on Twitter. I, I can't remember who they are. Please let me know, but they basically take screenshots of classic games like Half-Life and stuff or Counter-Strike and then just paint them with traditional oil or gouache paintings. And, and these creations are just beautiful. With physical media, you create real things. With digital media, you have unlimited versatility and certain magical effects that traditional arts just can't do. But secretly behind the lines, there's also traditional dissemination, digital dissemination. There are traditional nuances of culture, the digital nuances of culture. So it's a very multi-layered and hybrid approach. I still secret think I still secretly think that digital digital stuff in general makes people more depressed, not just in art, but in business and in, in social life, in work life too. You know, it's not a healthy thing staring at a screen, not moving the whole day, not working with your hands really. So there is that. But 
Uh, I hope I could make you see that this is not a either or thing, but it's a complex discussion and a, a fertile ground for cross cross fertilization. And as this cross fertilization hybridization goes on, it's going to give rise to more unique forms of creativity and art. And it's just going to be like a nice thing to have. As always, this is the end of this discussion. I could say a bit more about like what traditional media means to me because personally as an artist at least in terms of my fine arts prospects or my fine arts practice I like making real things on cardboard and canvas and then selling them or framing them or hanging them on walls or st storing them in drawers and stuff you know I really really seriously like that thing so personally I think there's gonna be many more digital artists in the future and they're gonna be enormously talented but for myself, I have chosen that path and I'm going to be following that. Of course, there's going to be cross fertilization as we just spoke. Anyways, I hope you found this discussion enjoyable and let me know in the comments if you agree, disagree or if you have other ideas to contribute. As always, consider supporting me on Patreon.com and as always, have a nice and great day. Goodbye for now. Ciao.